So greetings, people. We are yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So here I want to you know, enlighten you about people that claim to be representing Christ. People that have been claiming to be standing in union with believers. People that have been claiming to be living righteously, upholding their integrity on the basis of Christian values. And the likes of these people that I'm talking about, one of them that talks too much, but he has no substance, but he does not live his life in accordance to the principles of the Bible. This one person is none other than the 419 from Nigeria, Solomon Ashom's Izang. And my argument to him today, against him today, is on his beliefs, his beliefs concerning gay marriage. I know we all have human rights. Everyone has a right to express their sexuality the way that they want, according to the laws of the land. But when we get to the laws of the Bible, when we get to the biblical principles, we don't compromise. It's either you stand for the truth, the sole truth, or you're just deceiving people. If the Bible says no to A, none of us in the Christian community have the right to come and say yes to it. If the Bible says this is bad, none of us in the Christian community were given the right to come and approve it. What the Bible condemns, we should all condemn it in the body of Christ. In as much as we all have rights, our rights only apply to the laws of men, not to the laws of God. So in the case of this 419 journalist who claims so much to be standing for the truth, who claims so much to be doing what has been commanded by God, he has proven through his interaction and through his uh, perception of certain biblical principles to be wrong. He has gone against so many biblical principles. And for that, I disregard him as a true servant of Christ. I disregard him as a true believer. I disregard him completely as someone that is standing for the truth. And the reason why I'm doing this is based on the information that he has put on his platform and the information that he has been, you know, and the people that he has been advocating for. Solomon has been advocating for gay marriage. He is in full support of it. He sees nothing wrong with it, even though the Bible does. He feels like these people must be given an opportunity to live in sin. He's allowing that space in the Christian community that of all the wrong things that everyone else is doing, at least let's give gay people an opportunity to express their sexuality. But what does the Bible say about gay people? The Bible has made it so clear that man-to-man -man marriage, same-sex marriage, is an abomination before God. The reason why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed was because of such activities. So who is Solomon Ashom's Izang to come and advocate for what God denounced? This, ladies and gentlemen, disqualifies this particular individual as a man that it will help you in anything of the spirit. The day you hear me going against any single principle that is biblical, please shut me down. Don't ever follow me. Don't ever listen to me. Because I would have taken and stand against God. That's what Izang has done over the years. He has been against certain biblical principles. He has taken the side with the sinners. And he still comes and claims to be trying to lead you to Christ. Don't follow such nonsense. Don't allow him to indoctrinate you with the false doctrine and giving you ideas that are inconsistent with the true word of God. So personally, as an individual, I have nothing against gay marriage for it does not exist, nor has it ever existed. God has never recognized it, nor will he ever recognize it as a real marriage. Therefore, all they have is the approval of the wicked government and of a twisted society and the likes of Solomon Isaac. Woe unto them who defy God's holy word. Woe unto them who strengthens the hands of sinners. Jeremiah 23 verse 14. Any particular individual that come and support sinners, they deserve hellfire. And those likes are Solomon Ashom Zizang. When it comes to things of Christ, let me tell you, I just, I, I just want to establish my point, my standing and my position. I don't compromise. Every decision that I make is consistent with the word of God. 
The way I've shaped my life is consistent with biblical principles. The way I live my life is consistent with what the Bible says. I might, short, I might, I might short fall of certain things, but there is no single day I'll ever come and go against the Holy Word of God. So look at some of the post, the compilation of Solomon's alterations, ideas, and feelings about gay marriage. The first post goes, so this was, this was back in 2013, and he says, I'm a 34-year-old I'm a, I'm a NBA center. I'm black and I'm gay. Jason Collins come out. It was an article that he was pushing for. Congratulations to Ireland and the gay community. That's Solomon Ashram Zizang back in 2015. 2014, Nigeria's president, good luck, Jonathan, has approved a bill, by, a bill banning gay marriage and same-sex partnerships. If you are caught, you go to jail for 15 years. Is that fair? The guy is complaining. <laughs> and then on, in September, in 2015, again, dear Christians, stop spending so much time and energy trying to convince God to bless you with a big house, more clothes, more houses. Instead, try spending that time and energy making homeless people have homes, divorced people feel precious, single people feel complete, gay people feel loved. No, we don't have time to make gay people feel loved. They are living in sin. They have to be condemned and ridiculed until they repent. Mr. Solomon, we don't have space for gay people in the Christian community. They need to repent. Simple. And he goes on to say, hungry people feel what, 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 the rest of the nonsense, I will not go through it. The other post, fornicators and adulterers in a church are a bigger issue and problem than gay marriage. <laughs> Everything he says is in support of gay people. A lot of Christians are atheists because they refuse to see God's image in the face of criminals, gay, poor, prostitutes, and the sick people. It, read between the lines. There's nothing that he says that does not involve gay people. Another post again. We oppose gay adoption. You can read it through so that you can understand that this man is rooted in gay marriages. This is he's something that he loves the most. And he will never leave anything that has to do with gay people. That makes us question his sexuality as well. He might be one. You never know. Another post. If what gay people say about Christians is true, please don't call me one. He's saying that if everything that gay people are saying about Christians is true, please don't call me a Christian. <laughs> You'd rather stand with gay people than with Christians. Judge them by the fruits that they bear. Pause the video and read this. Today I attended the funeral of a 23-year-old. It's all about gay marriage that he's talking about. Nothing else. Go through it. I don't have time to go through it because it's disgusting. Then he goes on to another post. A while ago I wrote an article titled, Even Jesus Was Gay. Really? Please make sure you read it before you comment. Nah, you don't even have time to read it. That's blasphemous, young man. That's blasphemous. Seek the face of Christ yourself. You need Jesus. You need to be born again. Another post. I think God is using the gay marriage issue to humble and teach the church that it means to teach the church what it means. Really love what it what it means to really love someone you disagree with. We have nothing to agree with gay people as child, children of God. Nothing. No compromises. Don't ever lie to yourselves. He goes on to say, it's very sad when you hear <laughs> Christians and Muslims who feel it's okay after a gunman killed 50 people in a gay club. Gay club. So I'm just going to scroll all the posts that he has been making and then you can just read them so that I can get to the... There, those are the posts. All these are his posts about gay people in support of them, advocating for them. He feels like gays are not given an opportunity to express how they feel. If you hate gay people, you are not a Jesus follower. People, and you follow a guy like this that talks like this. If you hate gay people, you're not a Jesus follower. We don't hate these people. We just want them to repent. That's all. They're living in sin. The Bible condemns it. Who are you, Solomon, to come today and say we have to support them, we have to be there for them, we have to encourage them? To continue living in sin. Where is the love in that? Encouraging people to sin. It's very critical, people. It's very important that you assess, evaluate, and do a background check of the people you listen to. Imagine listening to this garbage. Imagine sending your money to a man that is fighting Christ, that is fighting the Bible, that is fighting God, the word of God. 
and you still feel this person stands for the truth, what truth? He's a liar. Just like his father, the devil. I wrote this short, this short note so that it does not get out of my, my mind because I really want this passage to get across to people that are in the body of Christ so that it sinks in when it comes to matters of, you know, of the Bible, when it comes to matters of God. We don't have room to make any compromises. What is wrong is wrong. What has been disapproved by the word of God has been disapproved. The Bible is the constitution that we live our spiritual lives, our Christian lives. And we don't have a way out. We don't have any other books that we can live on or that we can base our beliefs on other than the Bible. So everything it says we do. If it says this is a sin, we stop doing it. It teaches us how to live a holy life. So we don't have room to use our own feelings, emotions, ideologies, or philosophies to try to make an understanding of what the word says. If the word says being gay is wrong, then it's wrong. Why do we want to change what the Lord has said? Woe unto them that strengthens the arm of sinners. Woe unto Solomon. So I wrote this short note so that it can really stand, so that we can read it together. And then you can also get my message. This is my letter to the body of Christ. This is my letter to the church so that we can all be freed from these false beliefs and all this false narrative is being put across by the likes of Solomon Ashum's Izang. My letter to you people. Dear brothers and sisters, do not support what God condemns. Anyone who supports evil in any way whether they are aware of it or not, are an abomination to God. If you approve of anything that God condemns in his word, you are an abomination, like Solomon. Ashom's Izang. Proverbs 17 verse 15. He that justifies the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. Let me read it again. Proverbs 17 15. Solomon, memorize this verse. Leave it, eat it, so that you understand it. Get it through the back of your head. Proverbs 17, verse 15. He that justifies the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. Another verse, Isaiah 5, verse 20. Woe unto them who call evil good. Woe unto Solomon. He's busy calling evil good. So my question to Solomon is, where do you stand as a Christian who claims to stand for the truth and against sin. And what is your relationship with Makado? The reason why I brought up Makado in this, in this question is because there were conspiracies that there was something that was going on. Not verified conspiracies. Hence, I said conspiracies. And this makes me try to validate those conspiracies by the way Solomon has been advocating for gay marriage. Makado is a male pastor. He used to be a male pastor. He claims he was in the occult and whatnot and whatnot. But they are very close with Solomon. So that's why I've brought their relationship to question. Because some people are fronting, some people are lying to be married, while at least they are double plugs, while at least they are, you know, they are servicing other men behind the office. But in the face of the people, they pretend to be married and to be straight. So the last part of my letter is, our feelings, emotions, and opinions don't matter. If God said something, let God be true. Every man is a liar. This is from Romans 3 verse 4. So, church of God, God doesn't care what you think about gay marriage. God doesn't care about your opinions about gay marriage. He does not even want to know how you feel about it. He has made it clear that it's a sin. He has made it clear that he does not recognize same-sex marriage. He has made it clear that it's an abomination. It's not our place to come and replace the truth that has been put across by the Lord that we save. So with that being said, Ango Solomon, Solomon Ashom Zizang, 419 journalist, you are not qualified to speak about Christ if you go against what Christ says. You are not qualified to stand for God if you go against what God said. 
For that I want you to repent and seek the face of God, seek the face of Christ before you start lying to people that you want to help them, before you start lying to people that you want to lead them to Christ. You are a charlatan, you have a vagabond spirit, you need deliverance, and may God see you through that you depart from this way of charlatanism that you're living. And stop talking about God if you don't have a revelation. I've never heard you talking about Christ. I've never heard you bring through, you know, verses and preaching the word of God to anyone. The only thing that you think you know is to expose things that you don't even know. So that being said, let me catch you on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. It's your boy, Mr. Pull the Trigger. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and click the notification icon so that you don't miss a single exposure that I run through across this platform. I'm out. Love you all. Happy 2022.